Hello and welcome to Prime Sports with Matlazi. In this episode, we're talking to Proteas and Titans fast bowler Lungi Ngiri. He's going to be talking to us about this support for the Black Lives Matter movement, the SJN hearings, and talk more about what has been an eventful test and limited over his career with the senior national team. Let's hear what he's got to say. Lungi, um, thank you very much for, for joining us here at Prom Sports with Matlatsi. Uh, I always say I want to start at the, at the end, not at the beginning. Yeah. Um, a few months ago, you, you came out strong um, with, your, with your views on uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you, you know, sort of most of the sports people were sort of scared to talk about it, but you came out strong and you spoke about it. Uh, what uh, sparked the fire in you to come out and discuss this issue that uh, is so important, especially for our country, South Africa, knowing that uh, of the past that we've had? I think you've, you've actually hit it on the head right there. Um, the past that we've had as a country um, is something that's very relevant to all of us. And, you know, I could see maybe people were a bit scared to actually have an opinion on the topic at the time. And I merely answered a question, you know, I was asked, you know, my views on it. And I said, you know, I think, it, obviously, I believe it's something we need to support. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, as, as, and also being part of the national team, I thought, you know, it's, it's a responsibility of ours to, to lead, you know, something like this from the front. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, anything like that, it's a sensitive topic. You can expect different types of reactions. Um, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was, also, there was a lot of support, but there was also a bit of pushback. Um, but, you know, something I, I, I stand strong in my beliefs and, and that's something I believe that, you know, needed to be addressed. And, and that's all I said. Merely, you know, I'll bring up the topic within the national team. And I think it's just something we needed to discuss at the time. Talking about the pushback, um, were you surprised that um, some of the former prominent uh, ex protea players uh, came out strong and, you know, uh, uh, sort of went against what you were saying? Were you, were, were you surprised by their response? Uh, look, I, I didn't know it would be ex-cricketers, um, but I knew that there would probably be some sort of response against. Mm. Um, to be honest, it, it, it's not like it made a big difference to me um, because this is a, it's an issue that all of South Africa faces, not just cricketers. Yeah. So, you know, to be honest, it, it didn't really matter who it was. Um, it was just the fact that it, I think it, it highlighted that this is something then we still need to discuss as, as a country. And like I said, it is a sensitive topic and people are probably nervous and scared to speak about it. Um, but yeah, I think the more we can try, at least, yeah. uh, we, we're going to get a lot further down the line and, and, and being able to actually address certain things as well. And you also felt very strongly about taking the knee. Yeah, yeah you know, because I, th I think that was the symbol at the time to, su to, to support um, a movement that was worldwide, uh, you know, and myself as a person, I, I, I believed in supporting that movement. And yeah, you know, the thing is, no one was being forced to do it. Mm -hmm. It was a personal choice. And, and, and that was the choice that I made and, and I still stand strong by it today. Looking back now, um, you know, from then up to now, um, obviously, you know, a lot of, not only you, but other people came. I think they were former and current uh, cricketers who, I think they formed sort of a group, uh, you know, to join hands together to sort of try keep on uh, making noise about this. Do you feel, uh, you know, there was a, some sort of a, 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 a you know, positive impact that has, that has been made? in time to sort of educate the people who are against this thing? I think so, yes. But I also don't think... Some, I think sometimes people aren't against it. Sometimes they maybe don't understand mm -hmm. why. Um, and if you don't really understand, you're not just going to jump into something. So it takes a bit of a, a explaining, but it also takes an open mind. You know, you, you're not going to get anywhere if, if someone is just going to say, no, nope, you know, I don't believe in this you know moving mm. this way mm. not really going to get anywhere that way but yeah if if you were to ask someone why you know if you ask someone why why do you support you know black lives matter 
and they explain to you and maybe you can understand the reasons then you more educated on the matter than yeah. if you don't even want to engage within the conversation yeah. so yeah i think there was a positive impact because there were a lot of questions being asked you know i had close family friends that were asking me you know that they didn't understand what's going on mm. you know i um, mean can you explain to us why um and you know the more you explain to them they're like okay all right i see i see what you mean i understand and even if they still choose not to support it at least they educated on the matter and i think mm. that's the most important thing mm. um you operate in a team spot um where you know you know you find that We've got a lot of people from different backgrounds and stuff like that, but I don't want you to go deeper into the current Protea setup now because of putting you in a difficult position because you are the current player. But generally, um, um, you know, when you are in a team sport, also there must be sensitivities there so that mm. you know everybody feels 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 welcomed, feels part of a team. Yeah, and I think, I mean, some cases the the Protea is a very very diverse team. You know, I don't think any other team in the world has as many races in a team as yeah. that, that that we have um or you know different cultures as well and and we have to be sensitive to certain cultural cultures and beliefs and yeah it was a it was a probably how do I put it it's it's it's, it's very sensitive like yeah. i've been saying yeah. because you know you can't just disregard someone's beliefs yeah. or cultures you can't just put that aside for your own agenda um But yeah, you know, also with that diversity we have unity. Yeah. And and that's the beautiful part of it. You know, we we able to sit down and we able to communicate, you know, help someone else understand your culture and you understand their culture, their beliefs. And I think that's one thing that's been the most amazing for me to play for South Africa. I've learned so much about different people and different beliefs um that I feel I'm a, I'm a lot more educated. Mm. and don't just make assumptions off the top of my head uh, you know it's coming from a place where i've spoken to someone you know i'm not just speaking because I, for the sake of speaking so yeah. but yeah and uh, you know over the past while um there's been the SJA hearings um where you know uh, current and former players coaches at Mestas and the works people have been going there giving the experiences what have you made of this uh, as the endurance um because i'm sure you've been following us going on there yeah you know listening you know every every person has a story um whether it's good or bad um, every person has a story i believe mm-hmm. you know if you've played for your country you have a story that you tell your kids or your wife and your partners and you know your family but what that story is is obviously determined by how your journey went and you know there's a lot of guys that that felt they were hurt along the journey mm-hmm. and they were done wrong and i think there's there's space for them to be heard which is the SJNs mm-hmm. uh, and like i'm saying again just sometimes listening to understand not to to judge or maybe someone just wants to be heard they don't want anything they just want to share their stories because they would hate for probably their child to go through the same thing if they were to get to that level um and that's why i believe there's a place for everything and there's also a place for the sjns you know within the country the guys have stories to tell why don't we just listen yeah you know? and uh, you know on a more pointed question maybe um you have worked with magbocha for mm. for a long time um, at the titans um, and national team What's your relationship with him um and uh, you know what kind of a guy is he So I I have a very good relationship with Mark Boucher actually because he actually helped me transform into a pro if I can put it like that Yeah um from the day he came to the Titans and and, and started coaching you know he became like a mentor to me you know and just not just in cricket even like financial stuff off the field you know I could go to him for advice for someone who's successful yeah. and you know doing well for himself um he's the one who asked me as well you know do I want to play for the proteas and and obviously every cricket you're going to say yes yeah. um but he was asking me do I have a process you know um so I've had a I I still have a very good relationship with him and we have an open and honest relationship which is what I love as well you know he doesn't beat around the bush with me 
and I don't think he does that a lot with <clears throat> many people, excuse me. He's straight to the point and, and that's what I've always enjoyed about him coaching me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, since day one, you know, he he told me I needed to transform, you know, my body. I was I was a bit chubby. You know, you gotta lose that <laughs> yeah. if you wanna play for the Proteus. You know, at the moment with your performances you're just kinda knocking on the door. Um, but the if hard you want chats. If, yeah, if you, yeah, the hard chats, you know, and I've, and I've mentioned that before because they were hard chats. I sat yeah. down in a room with him and we just sat across the table and he told me, you know, and I was like, coach, you know, what? be honest with me, you know, what do I need to do to play for South Africa? Mm -hmm. And he said, A, B, C, uh, you need to lose this baby fat, mm -hmm. um, you need to get in the gym, you need to get strong, you need to run. And he used to tell me, um, yeah, he's like, you see, you see Makaya? can run for, for hours you know and, and that could you could see it in his performances yeah. in test cricket yeah. and he's like that's the sort of stuff you need to do you know you need to start enjoying running and that's why uh, lockdown when we had a bit of a time period uh, where we could get out you know I, I, I picked up trail running you know he suggested that that's something he does yeah. I picked up trail running and I lost so much weight that you know it just helped me so much more with my cricket so for me, I've always had a good relationship with him and I, I appreciate everything he's done for me as well. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk cricket now. Um, we're meeting here at uh, University of Pretoria. Mm. Uh, you see you're working very hard in the nets there with some of the kids who are playing uh, <laughs> for the club here. Yeah. Um, you missed out on the... Um, you are missing out on the ODI series against Sri Lanka. Mm. You are some time off. Uh, but you are part of the T20 side. Um, how has been preparations here now? Uh, because you'll be going over to subcontinent to meet up with the guys for the for the t20s yeah you know um there was some there were some personal reasons as to why i missed a bit of cricket um but those i think i'll only disclose at a later stage yeah. you know at the moment there's there's a focus and and a goal that i have um and that's trying to be in the world cup squad mm -hmm. and you know going to the world cup um but yeah you know the preparation's been good you know i mean Recent tours we've done very well um, and our captain Temba as well, you know, we've, we've had some good success uh, West Indies and Alec, yeah. yeah, I mean people look at it lightly, but I mean we those were defending world champions and we beat them in their backyard yeah. and I think Sometimes people Look at cricket games because they're so consistent, you know, I mean there's one today one tomorrow one yeah. tomorrow the next day so if there's a, a few losses you know you look at the losses but you forget the wins and we won that series you know sort of thing we went to Ireland we won that series as well so you know we've been on a good roll um, Sri Lanka now coming up looking to keep that form going and take that you know into into the World Cup mm. I think also trying to stay mentally fresh and, and physically fresh is key Mm. which is why also sometimes you know you need to step away sometimes you know it's a hard thing to do because you know people probably point fingers and say why you know you know this cricket being played why aren't you playing but you need to realize if you've got something like a world cup coming up yeah. you want to be at your best physically you know you don't want any hiccups you don't want any niggles and i've been there you know mm. playing a world cup where you're a bit fatigued and next thing you know, you pick up an injury. I picked up an injury in the second game. You missed two, now you've got to come back for the yeah. third. You know, that you don't want stuff like that happening. So I think preparation is key. And I think we've been doing that very well. Yeah. But also as a player, I'm just very conscious of what I need to do now. You know, yeah. you don't want to keep making the same mistake because then you're not learning. So mm -hmm. there's a process to doing things. Now. So this T20 series against Sri Lanka is pretty much the last event before the World Cup. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, for, for, for you guys, uh, I'm of, of, of all, you always talk about picking at the right time. Um, mm. You go in there, it's, it's three matches. Uh, hopefully you, you play in all of them. Um, in your mind and in your body, how do you approach this, this series, knowing that uh, you know, I've got to be at this level to ensure that I come back, I rest again, and then it's the World Cup. What uh, is the process? Well, there is still a bit more cricket. You know, there's this series, then there's the IPL yeah, in yeah. Dubai as yeah. well. So that's also something we need to think about because, I mean, to play in the conditions that you're going to be playing in, it's also, it makes sense. Yeah, it you helps. You know, it's something that you'd, 
probably want to do is, but I mean the main thing is figuring out what you need to fix um, before you get to the World Cup because mm. you can't be coming in with a doubt that oh, I don't think I can do this you not at World Cup stages not yeah. on that not on yeah. that level of you can't be doing that um, so if you have any doubts you kick them out now yeah, yeah sort of thing so that's what that's and then I think it's more mental than anything because yeah. all the guys we've been doing this for for a couple of years now so I'm pretty sure you know what you're good at doing and you know what you struggle with mm. so I think it's just fixing the screws up there just tightening everything yeah, which is what you do now yeah, yeah. which is why I come here <laughs> um, back to where it started you know when I first started playing cricket properly you know, I left. I left Durban, yeah, and I took a and I took a chance to come play club cricket at Tux. There's a guy called Pierre Dubrain who was very instrumental. Yeah, he yeah. was he was the key for me to come here. Yeah, um, he was very persistent as well that yeah. he wanted me here, and I took a gamble. You know, uh, I'd been in KZN my whole life, so those guys knew me. It's probably safer, you know, the safer bet for me to stay yeah, yeah. there. Um, Comfort zone. Yeah, you know. But sometimes you got to get out of that. And I think Pierre convinced me using those words, you know, just get out of your comfort zone a bit, stretch yourself, you know, you never know what you can achieve. And then I got here and I was working with Coach Chris, who I was uh, working with again today. Yeah. And he's been my bowling coach since I arrived here. Yeah. So whenever I've got any doubts or need to work on anything or, you know, need a strong, honest opinion. <laughs> You're very good at this hard yeah, chat stuff. No, nah, <laughs> listen, I've, I've you grow some thick skin. Yeah, yeah it's not know, easy. Eh? People say a lot of things to you, and they're not always nice. But yeah, you got to take some with a pinch of salt. You know, yeah, some yeah. of them, it's for the better of your career, and then some are just trying to break you down. But you can see those. Yeah, because so yeah. I've aside. actually I was actually watching him earlier on while you were bowling in the net with the kids there. Some of the kids were not, uh, mm. you know, finding their lines and lens right. And he's quite, uh, he says quite a mouthful. Yeah, so that's why I'm standing at the back there. Sometimes I'm just giggling to myself thinking, you guys don't know, we went through this same thing. Uh, yeah. Probably a bit nicer now because, you yeah, know, yeah. as you go over time, you know, you, you start to calm down. A yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. But when we were here, <laughs> the exact same thing was happening. Yeah. And you see the kids, you know, you're nervous, you don't want to get anything wrong. And I'm looking there, and I'm thinking, I was also that guy. Yeah. But uh, he means well. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's produced so many franchise cricketers yeah, as well yeah, that have yeah. come through here. Mm. Um, and, yeah, you know, he's really good at, at what he does. And mm. it's working with the younger guys. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the subcontinent, um, I think I've asked you this question before. Mm. Um, I've always found it a bit odd that, you know, especially South Africans, when you guys go to India, Pakistan, those those sub uh, conditions, the, the the first ballers tend to to actually do well. There. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a mindset, you know, because um, they always tell you know the subcontinent is probably best for yeah. spinners, and yeah, you know you probably want to play a few more spinners and seamers, and but if you also look at our our bowlers, you know the guys are just competitive guys, yeah. and they want to do well, you know KG world class. For how many years now? You know, yeah. you, and he's still. He's going. actually still young. Yeah, he's still. Yeah, yeah what? Twenty six. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he's been. He's a veteran. But as a legend as well, <laughs> really. So, you know, having someone like that as well leading your attack, it makes your life so much easier. Yeah. You just feed off of his energy, and you got someone like Anrik as well. You know, guys that can bowl, top end pace. Um, so yeah, I've also tried to develop my game. You know, mm. bring an aspect that is not quite there so we start swinging the ball a bit you know you, you know find different things you know like the slow balls the variations things like that to also aid to what we have you know if we all did the same thing yeah. i don't think we'd be as successful yeah. so mm. we know now if there's these conditions we can play these guys if there's these conditions this is the guy we're probably looking at yeah um and and, and it helps because we all feed off of each other you take pressure off of each other we've had good eras i mean from the island dollars and mm. uh, going through the years but this group of you guys, uh, you, um, uh, KG, Andrich, mm. uh, as the three front lines, uh, Simas in the team, uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite potent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it also comes with, you know, the, the team that we have. Because yeah. the guys, 
you know they encourage you and and they push you and you know we i think we've actually sat down and we've spoken about it and we're like guys we're taking this responsibility yeah. whether we do well or we do badly we we're going to try our best and and that's all we can do at the end of the day yeah. and i guess some of the guys best is, is world class so yeah. <laughs> that's more than enough we'll take it <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean you can uh, underestimate the, the 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 support and that is you know put by guys like Kesha after Brashamzi mm. um you know they they complement each other mm. i mean you guys very well yeah and you know you can see as well in and even in the T20s now to Braze number one in the world yeah ball around him you know whoever's firing at the time i think that's one thing about our team we not always looking at one person even though we have those greats um whoever's doing the best on that day you know we always say if that's your day you make it count and if we can see that it's your day we'll shift our game plans to play around you mm -hmm. and i think it works out nicely cuz it's not like in, there's any selfish behavior yeah. and i think that's that's also one of the keys to our success you know we you just touched on number one now. Uh, how long was you wait uh, uh, for you um, the test side? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, look, I think we we've started on the right journey now, um, and uh, you know I think if we keep going this way, especially with the mindset that we have yeah. for the type of cricket we want to play, uh, I think as as the bowlers we've become more aggressive, and as the batsmen we've looked to put runs on the board with okay might not happen all the time yeah. but we we looking to be, to make big scores mm -hmm. and like i say if the, if it's someone's day we play mm -hmm. around them and we make it count mm -hmm. um, so yeah slowly but surely it's a work in progress you know you're not just going to jump back to mm -hmm. to number 1 but slowly but surely you can climb that ladder and for you personally um, for me there? personally i think being part of that journey will develop that spot for me um, putting in those performances uh slowly but surely and i mean don't always want to look at the finish line um build the journey along the way so that if anything does happen you know where to go recheck and you carry on going mm -hmm. but um yeah obviously would love to have a number one spot or a number one title next to my name so yeah. it's definitely on the cards and it's definitely a goal of mine and that's that's mainly in test cricket test odis yeah. that's probably where for you, what do you at the moment yeah. yeah this year um focus is going to be more on the world cup and you know um, as south africa we've had our challenges with world cups and you know mm. um you have experienced one uh, heartbreak already uh, <laughs> hopefully there's not another one coming yeah um i don't want to mention the c word but uh you know i know it's still a bit far to get there but can we do it man you know, I think that word, and you're scared to say it, but it, it <laughs> resonates more with people who watch. Yeah. You know, they'll describe us as that. Never seen myself as a choker. I don't think any of us have seen ourselves as chokers. You know, the only thing I can say is, in those moments, we need to make decisions. That's what we do as sportsmen. That's what you get paid to do, and you get selected to do. There's, a, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to make a call and whether it's the right or the wrong call you still have to make a call mm -hmm. and you know you're selected because probably nine or eight times out of ten you've got that call right and that's all we try to do in those situations mm -hmm. if you get it wrong you get it wrong and you have to live with that and we do I mean, so well that's how personally i look at yeah. cricket i mean obviously i love this game and passionate about it but at the end of the day I got to make a decision mm -hmm. you know if they need six of one ball what ball do I bowl mm -hmm. I got to make that decision yeah. everyone's going to have their opinions yeah, yeah. but I need to bowl that ball and Which what's my best ball yeah. yeah so if you've been training this ball for this long and you get it wrong it goes for six you lose I have to live with that yeah you know so but that's pressure and how do you uh you know you accept it that's how it is that's yes. how you deal with it. You accept it. A lot of pressure is always there. I mean, you're playing for South Africa. There's so many people. These guys here are training here. Once They're going to be chasing my yeah. spot. So you know that, okay, if I'm not up to scratch, I'm out. Yeah. 
So there's pressure every day. There's pressure at training. If you're not training well enough, you're not going to make the starting 11. Doesn't matter how you, you okay, you've had a good season, yeah. but if you're not seeing the work in the nets, we can't play you, sort of thing. Mm. So there's pressure every day and you just got to accept it. Okay. There's one question I like uh, annoying my, uh, the, the, the first bowlers. Nets with the bat. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening to Tabrai Samzi uh, uh, a few days ago talking about ah, I'm working very hard in the, in the nets, yeah. in the bat. Uh, where are you now with your with your betting? Um, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, how difficult it is for you guys as, uh, as, as, as 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 the bowlers to really, you know, get your betting right, if I can say that. The thing is, you 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 really need a time period where you can just work on batting. Yeah. Because uh, at training, it's always your main skill. Because that's what we need you to do in the game. Mm. Um, so, you know, you're batting, it's, it's, it's mainly off-season. Obviously, you do your touch-ups in the nets and your, your training sessions and you bat. So, you know, you can't ignore it, you can't run away from it because mm. you're going to have to do it. Everyone bats, but not everyone bowls. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if we, if we speak to the yeah. best bet, we don't ask them about the bowling. Yeah. <laughs> so, it so, comes across as being a little bit unfair. Mm. Yeah. So, we, 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 have to, we have to obviously train train it and you know coaches have come up with some some crazy ideas sometimes you know they they stick you with a batting partner mm. or a batsman and they say when he goes to bat you bat mm. you know when he does his extra stuff you there with him and you watch and you learn from him mm. and yeah you know I found that for me worked the best because then you didn't have a choice you know sometimes you can bowl um, your whole session and then it's almost the end of training yeah. Okay, well, I guess everyone's going home, so mm. I think I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But you have but been working. Yeah, yeah no, we, we always, we have to. Mm. We don't have a choice. Mm. It's how you bat, though. You, what type yeah, of batsman yeah, yeah, yeah. you are, that's, that's, that's what we can discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, uh, moving on something uh, also. Um, Francis cricket. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, maybe let me put it this way. Um, a lot of people always see the finished article. I mean... Uh, I, I, I was at, uh, at Super Sport Park for your, for your test debut. Uh, you came back with a, with, with a six four. Mm. Um, that match did it pan out the way you, you dreamt of it as a as a twelve year old kid? Because it was some some debut uh, man of the match also. The, uh, having come through, you know, Tux and and the, and, and the Titans, I always thought okay. Well, I always thought my. My preferred game would be white ball cricket, T20s and, and ODIs. And I got my debuts before in T20s. Yeah. And I hadn't played an ODI just yet, but I mean, I think at that time the chats were just around white ball cricket. So, you know, I'd had a couple of good games in the red ball scene, you know, mm. taking a couple of fifers, but it was never anything on, on the top of my mind. Even when I got the call, I, it was the last thing I expected. And being told that Oh, by the way, it's within a couple of weeks. You need to, you know, run out of Super Sport Park. And, yeah, and bowl against the India. There. Against India, yeah. So it was never anything I'd imagined. I'd never imagined making my test debut against India at my home ground mm. and then taking a six foot. Yeah. Never. Because yeah. even when I was there, I was just, I was like, okay, well, let's, let's see how it goes, you know, just do what you usually do at Super Bowl Park. And you run and you bowl quick and you hit your line in length. Yeah. And the rest is history, you know. Next thing you know, catch behind, LBW, and we can just keep so tumbling. Like for something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I remember uh, there, was, there were issues with the pitch uh, also uh, mm. during that series where uh, I think uh, Virat Kohli commented that it's like uh, they are playing back in India. Yeah. Yeah. How was the I pitch? Was it difficult? It, it wasn't a super sport park, like it, it, because super sport park is known for pace and bounce, yeah, yeah. so it, it didn't have that. There was the odd one that would keep low, and it was turning, yeah. so there was a bit of everything. Um, but I also think that statement was just to try to kind yeah, of yeah, get in yeah, our heads. Yeah, yeah. But we were like, nah, this is our home ground. <laughs> you, you can't tell us that our home ground is your home yeah. ground, no chance. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Everyone was a bit worried about the pitch because it didn't look how we yeah. we thought it was going to. Mm. But you know, it's how you play the game. Were you starstruck? I mean, Virat, uh, some of the best 
Yeah. Uh, best man in the world, were they? Definitely Starstruck, you know, and he was on fire at that time. Yeah. So, you know, a Virat, I think he scored 150 as well mm. in that test. So, as well. And, it, you know, it, it's hard to understand because I think you physically need to be there. When you're standing there on the field and you're watching the best bowlers in the world bowl to this guy and they come back to you and they're like, yeah, okay, your turn. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So if you guys can't do it, what am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. You know, sort of thing. Um, but you believe in yourself yeah. and you, you do your job for the country. But also, I mean, in your benefit, you had some senior guys with you. Yeah, I think uh, that helped a lot. There must have been some discussions. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Vernon, Mone, KG, myself. Yeah. So you were in good company also? No, I was in good company. I was in yeah. good hands. I was in yeah. good hands. And, and what did Faf say? Well, let's just keep going, yeah. you know? Yeah, you know, you just keep encouraging the guys, uh, stay in the fight, and we don't let the game slip away from us because mm. that's one team that can really change things in a session. Mm. So you just try to control each session by session till the last ball of the day. I looked at your numbers. Uh, we'll focus more on Test cricket because that's the 10 matches, 32 wickets. Um, your day was in 2018. Uh, I, I understand we had a, a break with COVID-19, but mm. um, have you played enough Test matches uh, between your debut up to now and have you taken enough wickets? I wouldn't say I've played enough games. No. Definitely could have had a bit more fight. I could have had a few more fighters. Yeah, yeah. Because I got a couple of fourthers. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think that's my only disappointment. In as much as we blame the best men for not finishing starts. <laughs> I hear you. I hear there you. you I go. agree with you. I agree <laughs> with you. And, and that was actually a discussion we had at the start of this season, this year. Mm. But, you know, you got to make those moments count. And, yeah. and it came in West Indies where I was on four, but I was at the end of my spell. And... I think I, I had KG at, at mid-off and he just kept telling me one more. Yeah, yeah. One more. Because he was on to bowl next. I think he didn't want to bowl, but I was also, <laughs> but I was also you know, on the, like on the verge of a fifer. Yeah. And, and it's usually at those moments where I'll come off and someone else will get a wicket, then it's done. And yeah, so, yeah, I think at that moment. And I think I ended up bowling seven or eight overs on the trot to get that fiver and it came mm. and that's why I also collapsed to my knees because it had come after such a long time yeah and actually worked hard for that one yeah so I, you know, I really appreciated having him there because mm -hmm. I think if it was anyone else you know they would just be like well do whatever you want to do we've got a couple of South Africans who have gone to 100 tests mm. uh, I don't want to pressurize you but 50 um, definitely a goal of mine yeah now I love my test cricket to be honest with you and I enjoy playing it and slowly but surely out of all the formats it's it's taking yeah, its grip on me. Yeah. 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 It's taking its grip on me. I mean the other ones you enjoy it, but sometimes it's a bit of a hit and miss. Yeah. You know, someone just comes off and that's the game gone. But test cricket, you know, to play five hard days of test cricket and win in the last session, I think I'm still yet to experience something to that extreme. Mm -hmm. But even going to day four and playing a team straight out of the game. Mm. It's an unbelievable feeling. The other critical issue is that for a current generation cricketer, it's also important to play IPL because that's where you guys you know, make money to, to, to sort of mm. future-proof yourself. Mm. Um, that's also important. You want to keep on going to the IPL and, and, and yeah. playing there. Because also, besides the money issue, but you know, the competition is quite tight there. That level of cricket is probably as close to international cricket yeah. as you'll get. If not, probably similar because I mean, you, every team it's an international cricketer. Yeah. And if he's not from India, he's from Australia. If not Australia, England. England. If not England, New Zealand. <laughs> you just you just keep coming across. Where's Indus? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you take three wickets, and there's still another great batsman coming yeah, in yeah. who's averaging close to forty with a strike rate of oh one forty. You're thinking, gee, yeah. When is it going to end? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in terms of Growth in cricket, I think that has definitely helped me a lot, you know, in terms of handling pressure as well. You know, those situations where people are probably tense and scared to, to do something. You know, you, the first IPL we played, 
at uh, against KKR, and I think it was close to sixty thousand people. Mm. Couldn't hear myself breathe. Mm. Um, so like you know, just things like that. Now, I don't think there's a crowd that that's, that scares me, or intimidates me, or was yeah. too loud because yeah. that was that was it for me. Yeah. I was nervous there, and I can admit it now because yeah. I'm past it. Yeah, yeah. But for me, experiencing that was where I got goosebumps, and you know the wires start to go a bit. And that's when I understood. Okay, so this is what it feels like when you're under pressure, and you don't know what to do. Mm. A few years ago, you experienced a personal, mm. uh, uh, you know, heartbreak. Uh, we had IPL, and you lost your dad, and um, uh, that must have been very, very difficult for you. Mm. Uh, but I just want to also touch base at your your upbringing and the role your father played in your life and family. Um, it must have been a very 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 difficult uh, period in your life uh, at that time. Yeah, it was it was very hard, and I think it's because he was probably like my number one fan. Yeah. yeah. After you know any game, I know I've got a message from him. <laughs> or before any game, I'm getting a phone call. Yeah. You know, He's wearing my clothes everywhere to shopping centers. And yeah. He doesn't care. Um, so yeah, like lo- losing him, I think was a, a, a massive hurdle in my life. But you know, death is a part of life as well. And and it was during my debut at the IPL, um, so I had to come back for the funeral. Yeah. And then I wasn't even thinking of going back, but my mom said, you know, that was one of his dreams to see me play in the IPL because yeah. we always spoke about it. Yeah. And she said, you're there now, so I mean, you have to go back. Yeah. And then I think just winning it on top of that as well yeah, yeah, I made it too. even better, yeah. you know, because mm. it, it meant something. I actually, I was playing for something. Mm. And mm. Yeah, I think that was a, a beautiful moment. I think I always cherish that forever. As we uh, sort of start wrapping up now, you are most difficult opponent. Um, the guy who clubs you in a way. <laughs> Must I pick him? Yeah. Or do you have one? Yeah, no, me? no, no. <laughs> you tell me. I know you do your research, so I'm thinking, okay, no, no, you're no. Gonna tell you me. tell me. <sighs> Maybe before you answer, um, I, I was speaking to Junior Dallas some other time, and uh. England were here. He played SAA in, uh, in Porch, mm. and Joe Root, and all those guys were, mm. took him apart. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's the it's the English guys. You know, yeah. they 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 hit the ball and they score lots of runs, but they play good cricket shots. So yeah, you know, we understand that, and we've also played games where we've beaten them. Mm. Um, but if I were to pick one person, it's probably not even from another country. It's from this country. Yeah, we we practiced against AB. <laughs> I don't know why we did this. Yeah. But <laughs> we practiced against him before the, I think it was the Ram Slam final. Yeah. I think we were playing the Warriors. Or it was a T20 final. And we said we're going to practice our death bowling to AB. Okay. It was myself, Junior, uh, Malusi Siboto, and Shamsi. And I think we all went into that game with zero confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because it didn't matter what we bowled, it was on the side screen, oh, on the bank, on the hills. You lost all the balls. Like, yeah, at, at the end of the practice, we all stood together and we looked at each other like, hey guys, <laughs> this, this can't be it. Yeah. But yeah, that was, I'll never forget that training session because it, it, it honestly felt like it didn't matter what you did. Mm, mm, it mm. was going for six. Mm. You know, sometimes, you know, you just stand outside off stump, you can see all three of the stumps and you're thinking, I'm gonna go with the stumps, yeah. and it ends up up there, there. second tier. And yeah. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. The next one, I'm going at him, and you go at him, and it's there on the scoreboard. So it's just, yeah. yeah he was probably the one. Guy. That's why they call him a freak of nature. Oh. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Now, um, who did you look up to? Uh, who, you know, growing up? I used to watch a lot of Sean Pollock, uh, Mackay and Tini, mm. but also the West Indian guys. You know. Kimo Roach is one of my idols and, and I got to meet him, you know, recently got one of his shirts, so I'm very happy about that. Okay. Um, yeah, Kimo Roach, also a big fan of Shannon Gabriel. But yeah, you know, growing up, the South African legends, you know, Pollock, Dale, uh, Makaya. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, just watching those guys go about their work was yeah. 
an inspiration for me. Yeah. Mm. Sit and watch cricket and no one was allowed to touch the TV if cricket was on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm watching Watch. it till the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so those were the guys. And uh, would you have maybe liked to play it longer with uh, Dale Stein? Definitely. Mm. Yeah, just watching him operate. Vern? Vernon as well. Um, all those guys, Mona as well, mm. you know. I guess it was time, um, but I'm just grateful that I got the opportunity to, you know, be on the field with those guys. Mm. So where you are now, you in a good space. Um, can I pressurize you and say bring us the World Cup and then you'll, you'll try and deliver it for us? Oh look, it's a team sport, so <laughs> you, you well, take, take all the weekends. Take all the weekends. Take all the guys as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm there, I'll, I'll definitely do my best. Mm. Um, you know, there's no guarantees in life, so I also don't like getting ahead of myself. But if I'm blessed with that opportunity, I yeah. can promise you, I, I'm yeah. going to give it my all. And uh, the journey so far has been a roller coaster. The 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 the, the highs far outweighs the lows. That yeah, no. Yeah grateful for every opportunity to be honest yeah. and I appreciate it you know even with the hard times that comes with I still wouldn't change it for the world there last question I won't leave without asking this question rock nation <laughs> yeah big deal uh, yeah you know I think you can see the work that they're doing in South Africa currently and uh, I'm honored to be a part of it and uh, yeah I just hope the relationship keeps on growing I've seen guys on Twitter saying, have you met uh, Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's part of the job. <laughs> no, I'm just going to focus on the cricket. Yeah. So obviously, everyone's going to ask that. Yeah. You know, Jay-Z. Um, mm -hmm. So not yet. I'm not, I'm not making any promises, guys. I'm not making any promises. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm just enjoying you know rubbing shoulders with some of the best athletes yeah. in the world you know mm. just just knowing that you know they know who i am is enough for me because i see the kimon coming here i mean, but they started with the with sia mm. chasing colby and now apparel fast recently you spoon uh, they're taking all of our stars yeah i know they've they've gotten stuck into the rugby scene yeah. and uh I think we can also see the guys that are they're picking now are world class as well. So, yeah, myself and Timber, just gonna yeah, yeah, Timber also, yeah, just gonna keep going, mm -hmm. just gonna keep going from the cricket side, you know, pushing things as as much as we can, and with their support, you know, the sky's the limit. To be honest, as well, it's true. Yeah, uh, it's not just South Africa; it's international. So, yeah. very, very happy with that, and um, I'm still looking forward to the journey ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you need the glasses because hey, it's bright there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll invest in a pair. I'll invest in a pair. You'll never know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but thank you very much. Lungi, for thank you very much for uh, for for, for uh, allowing us into your space. Uh, I made sure that I uh, allow you to finish training. Yeah. Because I didn't want to disturb you, but uh, no, no, we, we, we 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 honored to have you. And uh, looking back at your at your journey, and uh, I think uh, you are an inspiration to the young guys out there. Especially with your stance on Black Lives Matter, it's a, it's a serious conversation we need to have. And uh, thank you very much for for gracing us. No, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.